Hi everyone, and I am here today to announce Victober 2023. Welcome to the Victober 2023 announcement video. I swear I get tingles whenever I do this. It is just, it has become such a part of the rhythm of my life, uh, you know, even more so my reading life. And I cannot wait to tell you about the wonderful plans we have for this year. And I am just delighted with the prompts that uh, everyone has come up with. I think it's going to be the best Victober yet. And I just love and savor and relish this time of year. Um, before I get into all that information, in case you are new to the concept of Victober, it is just an abbreviated way to say Victorian October. And every October, we like to encourage people to read Victorian literature. So uh, literature that was published between the years 1837 through 1901 and written by authors from the United Kingdom. And I think there is just such an abundance of amazing literature. It was such a kind of rebirth of the novel at that time, something in the water. <laughs> um, and it just made for so much amazing um, literature and it's just some of my absolute favorite. I find that it is really fulfilling in a way that other reading just quite isn't. There's this sort of X factor quality to it. And I also did want to say that I did design a t-shirt with um, Victorian authors last names on it. So we have Gaskell, Elliot, Young, as in Charlotte Mary Young, Trollope, Braddon, Bronte, Stevenson, Collins, and Dickens. Um, there were a couple authors like Thackeray and um, Hardy and um, Conan Doyle that didn't get on here, but I was out of space. Um, and I did want the, the um, font to stay pretty big. Um, so I know some people were talking about how they were very sad that Hardy wasn't on there. And so maybe one of these days, a um, kind of a Hardy shirt as a response will, <laughs> will happen. Um, but I, it is very comfortable and soft. I do really like it. So I will link it down below. There are also sweatshirts. If you are interested, it's, a, you know, totally unnecessary. All you have to do to take part in Victober is to read one piece of Victorian literature. So that could be as small as a poem and it could be as big as a novel. Uh, you make it whatever you want. The prompts that we have come up with are completely and utterly optional and are only there to enrich your time in Victober if it makes it enriching for you. But I know that we all have busy lives. So also, if you still want to do the prompts and you're a little bit worried about covering them all, you can double up uh, with the prompts. So the hosts for this readathon are the creator of Victober, Katie from Books and Things, Marissa at Blatantly Bookish, Petra at Petra U, and Roz from Skelly Dandling About the Books. So I will link all of their announcement videos down below, and you can find uh, wonderful content from them. In addition to each of our prompts, we will be giving recommendations for that specific prompt. And so I will tell you their prompt, but you can head to their videos for more information about their prompt if you were wanting some recommendations and felt like you weren't quite sure what to read for it. Also, the group read. The group read is going to be The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope. And this is a book on a grandiose scale. To me, uh, Middlemarch is to George Eliot what The Way We Live Now is to Anthony Trollope. And this is very high praise for me because I absolutely love and adore Middlemarch. And you meet such a huge cast of characters. You really get an idea of kind of the uh, cultural awarenesses at the time, what was going on, what were the big hot button issues. And, um, it has humor. It has some romance. It has, uh, 
touch of mystery to it. Um, and it's just an incredibly um, amazing work of fiction. So I first read The Way We Live Now when I was very new into reading Victorian fiction. And I came out being mostly relieved to be done with it. But now since then, having fallen in love with uh, Charles Barsetshire Chronicles, I'm reading the Pallister series and I've really loved one of them. Haven't loved the other, but I've only read two. And then having really loved some of his standalones. I'm very much looking forward to coming back to this novel and seeing what I think about it now that kind of my Victorian reading muscles have been a bit strengthened. And I hope that you too enjoy it. So there is going to be a Discord group um, and I will link it down below. And I'm pretty sure a Goodreads group too that um, will be kind of not managing as much, but on the Discord group, the host will be more active, particularly Roz and Katie. I will try my best to be in communication there. And uh, without further ado, the prompts for 2023. Uh, the first is my prompt, and that is to read a Victorian work with a stranger or an outsider. This is something that I have started to notice in Victorian literature, where it is a concept where either someone um, is going to be with many people that they don't know, um, or in a kind of insular community, someone new comes to the community. And so this kind of uh, Victorian notion of the, the um, uncertainty of the character of a stranger or an outsider is really prevalent in a lot of novels. And I thought it would be really cool to kind of explore this more. I will give my recommendations in just a moment. The next prompt is from Katie, and that is a piece of Victorian new woman fiction. So this concept of the new woman, Katie will go into more detail into her in her video, and she'll have lots of wonderful suggestions for that prompt. The next prompt is Marissa's, and that is to read a work by a new to you author, which I was shocked when she suggested this, and she said she couldn't believe we hadn't done it before. And then I looked back and, you know, our list of prior year's prompts, and we had not, which I can't believe. It's such a great prompt. So I'm very excited that Marissa came up with this, and it will give us all an excuse to kind of broaden our Victorian horizons. And then lastly, um, it, oh, not lastly, next is Petra, read a Victorian first person narrative. So I appreciate that it's kind of expanding. You don't have to just stick with novels if you want to do something different than that. Um, you can, and I have some fun plans for this prompt. And then lastly is Roz's, which is read a work where class features strongly and hint, hint, the way we live now would definitely fit that prompt. Um, and uh, I just think there's a really great variety there. And I have found something for each prompt that I'm very excited to be reading. Okay, now on to recommendations for my prompt where you read a Victorian work with a stranger or outsider. I just think it brings a really interesting element into the story, this sort of uncertainty. And so the first is The Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde. So this would be a really short, easy way to cover this prompt. And The Canterville Ghost is... 45 pages. It is very short, and I'm telling you, it is well worth every page. Um, it is the story of this American family that has inherited an estate in England, and they go um, to stay in the estate, and there is a ghost there. Um, so they are kind of outsiders coming there, but the ghost is a bit of an outsider living in the world. So it really covers the prompt. And I love that this is a really beautiful balance of heart and humor. And I meant to reread this last October and it didn't happen. So I think I might revisit this and maybe on Halloween. I think that's what I said I wanted to do last year and it didn't happen. So I'm going to make it happen this year. And this is a collection. So I won't read the whole collection because I didn't love all the stories, but I would really love to also make make time for Lord Arthur Seville's crime. That was a really a one full of kind of dark humor. Um, so that one would be really fun. Uh, then the next one that features an outsider or stranger is The Law and the Lady. This one is full of our main character, uh, Valeria, meeting new characters, but she also is herself an outsider to this new kind of society that she has married into. It's a really gripping plot, quite a page turner. So if you're wanting, um, you know, if you have kind of some more slow, dense reads that you feel will be hard to get through, this would be really, really um, quite uh, compelling to 
continue picking up. Then the next one is The Would Be Goods by E. Nesbitt. If you're wanting something more lighthearted, I highly recommend The Would Be Goods. This is the second in the Bastable family series. And I'm pretty sure that the new treasure, or the story, the story of the treasure seekers, which is the first one, would qualify for that prompt. There are probably some new people that they meet, but I do think this has a really charming element to it and that they go to stay in a house in the countryside and they are constantly um, getting into scrapes. And also, if you have an edition of it, um, most likely it will come with illustrations. And <laughs> here's a scene where they're all realizing that the, the roof is leaking water. Uh, it's letting rain in. Uh, so this could be a really charming addition. And um, yeah, just a lot of fun. Then we have Great Expectations. Lots of new characters to meet in this. Um, you know, characters that come from a different part of the world. And also Pip himself um, is a bit of an outsider to the more upper crust society. Uh, so it's interesting to see him kind of really much like a fish out of water, um, out of his element and seeing how he takes that on. I know that Pip can be a very frustrating character, but I appreciate his character arc so that I don't get too terribly frustrated since I feel like he does actually progress as a character, which is kind of my basic requirement for a character that I can cheer on. Uh, then one that is full of outsiders and strangers, and that is Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. This fabulous, beautiful edition I was gifted for my birthday, and I'm so excited to now own an edition of Treasure Island. Um, if you want a really lovely, compelling adventure tale, Treasure Island is wonderful, and it is definitely a shorter book. Um, this, uh, it's less than 200 pages. Um, and I highly recommend it. I just, I love this so much. Um, then the next one, uh, and in a very similar vein to Treasure Island would be Moonfleet. It's an adventure tale and it's a children's story. It has a bit of a different flavor to it than Treasure Island. Um, and I think that, um, over time, I've realized how that book made more of an impact on me than I thought. When, the first, when I first read it earlier this year, it seemed a little uh, s simple, simpler than I thought it was going to be. But then as time goes on, it's really stuck with me. So it's a special book. And I think that would be a really great option. Uh, then David Copperfield. You meet so many uh, people who are outsiders in this story. And um, David himself is an outsider uh, plenty of times that he has to come in and, you know, kind of make his way in the world. This is one of my absolute favorite Victorian novels. I love all of the warmth and sentimentality in it. And there's so many lovable side characters. Um, so it's one that I already cannot wait to read with my boys when they're older. I just think it's one that has something for everyone. And I love David Copperfield. Uh, then some hearty to recommend, and that is The Return of the Native. Um, so this one is interesting because it starts out where there's a character who is from this insular community, but he's been gone for a while, and then he's coming back. So there's kind of lots to uh, process and speculate on um, with that element in the story. Really, really recommend The Return of the Native. If you want kind of this... Um, soul-stirring reading experience. It has some very intense things that happen. The writing is so beautiful though. And so if you want a tearjerker, I highly recommend The Return of the Native. Another one is The Woman in White. And our main character, uh, Walter, is it Hartwright? I think it's Walter Hartwright. Um, it doesn't say his last name on, on the back, uh, but he is going to be an art teacher. Is it art teacher? No, I, I'm, I'm second guessing myself. Yes, drawing master. Um, to two young women that he has never met. And while he is traveling there, there is a woman in a white nightgown. And uh, she has a very kind of weird conversation with him and then completely disappears. And then a few minutes later, two men show up and they say, a woman has escaped from an asylum. Have you seen her? Uh, so lots of outsider and stranger elements happening in this book. It's one of my all-time favorite Victorian novels. The sustained tension building in it is just insanely good. Highly recommend it. Uh, then Wuthering Heights. I'd say that Heathcliff is maybe the ultimate outsider and stranger. And he does not really escape this feeling 
for much of the book. Um, he is treated very differently than the others in the book. And so it makes for some really interesting relationship dynamics within the story. This one is so iconic um, and for good reason. Uh, then we have Cranford. And in Cranford, it is very much a small, tight-knit community. And so when anyone from the outside moves in, they quickly realize there are certain notions of what is normal and what is acceptable in the community of Cranford. If you want a gentle, quiet read, but that slowly um, will uh, have a piece of your heart, Cranford could be a great option. And also it has a lot of humor, which I love about it. Uh, then Romola by George Eliot. This starts out with a stranger entering a community. Uh, this is an epic work of historical fiction set in Medici era. Um, oh my goodness. I want to say Venice, but it is not Venice. Florence. Uh, and there is a lot to do with art and uh, church, the, uh, the church, capital C, and um, power structures, and also masculinity and femininity. It is full of asking the deeper questions of life, but there's also a really gripping plot that happens at the same time. Uh, so a really powerful book um, that will challenge you, but will reward you so much for reading it. Then continuing on with some George Eliot, uh, the next one is Daniel Deronda. Um, this has a lot of really interesting focus on what it was like to be Jewish and live in Victorian society. So that there is very much an outsider question. And also some uh, discussion of Zionism um, as a theme. And um, it's just such a moving, moving book. George Eliot has a way of um, writing to the soul of the reader and just piercing your heart in such a beautiful way. And you can tell she has so much love for her characters, even when they're making terrible decisions. Um, she shows that they are deeply flawed, but also have some really um, lovely ways that they grow and evolve uh, in whatever story they are in. So Daniel Deronda is one of my absolute favorites by George Eliot. Um, and then we have Deerbrook, about two sisters, Hester and Margaret, who, uh, after their parents die, go to live with their aunt and uncle in a rural community. And I love this dreamy little village that they are in. And I love uh, Hester and Margaret's personalities. They are really similar to um, Eleanor and Marianne in Sense and Sensibility. They are oil and water, but the bond that they have is so beautiful. And I will say that there, is, there are two romances um, that happen in this. Uh, each sister falls in love, but um, I don't love the romances in this. Both of the men, I, I'm just not, they're kind of a stressful element of the story. So um, you know, I would, I would caution you not to go in expecting it to have, you know, uh, lovely romances that you can just get lost in. But the story of the sisters is what I really love about this and the community itself. Uh, then Lady Audley's secret. Lady Audley, what do people know about her? And it turns out not much. Um, and it is, oh, just such a delightful, suspenseful, twisty, turny ride. So buckle up because it's a wild ride. Um, then I had to include some Charlotte Mary Young because there were several that fit very much so. Uh, the first that is very charming and just, I love it. And that is Countess Kate by Charlotte Mary Young. And I love this edition. I found it on Etsy, I think it was. And this is a children's story. And it is all about Kate, who I say it feels like if Joe March and Anne, a combination of Joe March and Anne Shirley suddenly became a countess, what they would be like as a countess. And she does not fit in. Um, and she spends the whole book kind of trying to do better, but she is, you know, wherever you go, you take yourself with you, you know? So I just find her very endearing as a character because she really does try hard. She does her best, um, but she can only do so much. Uh, and I just find this highly enjoyable, just a really sweet children's book. Um, then, her most famous, I would say, and that is the heir of Redcliffe. Guy Morville is um, not from the part of the community that you're spending the vast majority of the book. And so getting to know Guy, but also getting to know the Edmonston family. I am so fond of this book. It has so much depth in it. And if you are looking for a Victorian author that can balance um, 
a group of characters having one giant conversation, I'd say that Charlotte Mary Young is the best at it, hands down. I know that is a big thing to say, but that is really how I feel. So I just love her conversations are, they sparkle and they come alive and you get to see each distinct personality of each character. Oh, so I love the air of Redcliffe. And then also several others of hers, I have to consult my list, um, fit that. And the next one is Heart's Ease. And this one is interesting in that the, I, I'm pretty sure it's the youngest brother in the family goes away for a while and he comes back with his new bride who they waited until she turned 16 so they could get married. Um, and her name is Violet. And the family is very upset that he was wed so suddenly and to this woman who they have not, they know nothing about her. And she just seems kind of like a mispress and they're worried there's no substance to her. And then slowly over time, you get to see really the stuff that Violet is made of. And it's a beautiful, beautiful story with characters that make some very frustrating decisions that does seem to be um, a common element of Charlotte Mary Young's books, but told in such a way that it feels unfortunately very real and like you can know characters like that. And that's her characters always feel authentic. Uh, the next one is The Three Brides uh, by Charlotte Mary Young. And this one is a story where there are three sons who are all fairly newly married, and they move back home into the same home to be with their newly widowed mother. And um, again, just sparkling conversations, distinct personalities from all of the characters, um, kind of the sharpening and refining of one's character is a major element of the plot. And there's just this, I cannot get enough of Charlotte Mary Young's writing. So I'm definitely going to keep making my way through her books. Um, and then was that at Hearts at Ease, The Three Brides, and Chantry House. That was the other one. So Chantry House is unique in that it has a bit of a ghost story element to it. So um, your main family, which I'm forgetting their last name now, uh, but they move, they inherit Chantry House, which is very far from where they live, and so they have to become a part of this community. And something that makes it even harder for them to kind of really organically become a part of the community is that someone in their family has kind of besmirched the family legacy with the actions that he has done. Um, and some of it is his fault and some of it is very much not his fault. And so they kind of have to prove to the community that they are worthy um, to be there and to be living there. And it just has a really lovely story arc to it. If you want more kind of domestic Victorian fiction, you should definitely try out Charlotte Mary Young. The next one I'd like to recommend is Goblin Market by Christina Rossetti. This is just a delicious, lush poem. So again, to fulfill this prompt, you don't have to read a full length novel. You could if you were feeling like you wanted to cover all the prompts, but with some shorter options. It's a beautiful, beautiful poem. And last year, I think I said I was going to read it every day, uh, or maybe I said that with the Lady of Shalott. The point being, I want to try that again this year, but I'm also torn by, I want to read Kipling's If. So we'll see, it's a toss up between the two. Uh, okay, then the next one is A Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell, a little book that I like, just a little teensy bit, as in I just love it and, and am obsessed with it. Um, so several outsider elements happening in this. One, that's a spoiler, so I can't say that plot line. But then the other is um, the stepmother in this is not from the small community that she is a part of. There's also a fair number of people who are new to where they are um, new to the area or uh, one character that travels to foreign lands. And um, yes, if you just want a beautiful domestic story with characters that feel real and you're going to love and follow their journey. It's just lovely to spend time in this world. Um, so I love Wives and Daughters. Uh, then two more Gaskell that I had to recommend. Um, the first is Mary Barton. And this is a book that Katie from Books and Things put it really well. Like she said, the first half is a bit slow and then the second half is breakneck speed and you cannot stop reading. And um, you are so invested in this story. And what's interesting is I would say that in Mary Barton, it's not necessarily the strongest characterization, but the novel itself, the story feels so important and significant that this is a book I don't mind not knowing the characters as well as I normally would like. Um, and so there's some really sad, sad things that happen in here. You are seeing the poorest classes and how they are just trying to survive and have enough food to eat. Um, and it is just beautifully and movingly portrayed without um, 
trying to take away from the fact of the seriousness of the poverty. And then any Sherlock Holmes story, I feel like either Holmes is going somewhere new or a stranger who he doesn't know is coming to him. So you could just read one story, one of the short stories, or a longer book if you wanted to. There are so many of those that work for it. Um, Jane Eyre. Yes, I can't believe I was. I didn't have it in my stack. Jane Eyre. Um, Jane meets a lot of new people. She's traveling new places. And I love this book. It's top 10 Victorian novels. And um, it's because of the character of Jane, her really surprising inner strength that you didn't know she had. And it's so movingly um, shown and just the stuff that she is made of and how um, sometimes uh, quiet strength can really just take you by surprise. So such a beautiful journey to go on. Um, then uh, one that is not one of my favorite books, but it really fits the prompt, and that is The Tenant of Wild Hall. I'm recommending it because even though I don't love it, oh, you know what? I thought I had my copy right there, but I don't. Um, even though I don't love it, so many others do love it. So I just want to put it out there to maybe consider. I know that the main character of Helen is somebody that a lot of readers really connect with. Um, so maybe one that you want to consider. It is a very um, famous Victoria novel, not as famous as her other sisters. And I know that Anne Bronte fam, uh, fans say they really wish that she was better known. Uh, but then you know what? I can't help but recommend my favorite Anne Bronte, and that is Agnes Grey. This is a governess story, and you're following um, Agnes as the family has fallen on hard times financially, and she is trying to um, make things better for their family. Uh, so Agnes Grey would be a great option. Uh, then let me just double check. I'm not forgetting anything. Um, the Widow Barnaby by Frances Trollope. This is such a fun story. If you are an Austen fan and you like the humor in that, I highly recommend The Widow Barnaby. She is quite a ridiculous character. She's not always likable. In fact, she's kind of rarely likable, but she is so skillfully crafted and it's just such a funny book. Um, so I definitely want to read more by Frances Trollope. There's always so many Victorian books that I want to get to, and there's only so much time in a day. Uh, then uh, The Belton Estate by Anthony Trollope. I fell so in love with this book earlier this year. It is a standalone Anthony Trollope, which is really cool. And um, it is about a family that they are land rich, but cash poor. And a cousin who they've never met comes to uh, stay. And then the plot kind of unfolds from there. It has one of the most winsome characters in it. And I loved him from the first scene that he was in. Uh, then The Trumpet Major by Thomas Hardy, another Thomas Hardy. I really enjoyed. Um, I read it earlier this year. And it's just, it's got such a... Um, what do I want to say? Unpredictable plot. And it's got a very complicated love um, pentagon, I think is what we decided that it was. I read it with my friend Elizabeth and we had so much fun reading it together. Um, then Oliver Twist. Oliver has quite the adventure that he goes on. I know this is a Dickens that people um, don't always love as much, but I personally really like it for just the incredible story uh, as opposed to the character of Oliver. Uh, and then let's see if there's anything else. Um, okay. Now, I know I'm going to get some comments where people are saying, but Kate, what about this one? That, that, that I only have so much time in a day. I can't list everything. But I will say, I did just re realize I didn't say Dracula. It was written on my list, but I didn't say it. And that is one of the ultimate outsider books. <laughs> um, so Dracula is a very mysterious character. And as you get to know him, you see just how dastardly that he is. And um, I really, really recommend Dracula if you want something spooky and atmospheric. Um, and it's written mostly, I think it is, in letters, um, which is a really cool and different format um, for most Victorian novels. Okay, everyone, I can't tell you how much joy Victober brings to my life. And it's just such a special month. I have so many video videos coming out for all of you, some really special interviews. And I think it's just going to be so much fun. So stay tuned. And I have another announcement video relating to Victober coming out later, I think next week, but it's coming out soon. And so stay tuned for that uh, before you make all your final reading plans. But I will have it come out soon so you can account for it in your reading. Thank you as always for watching and have a lovely day.
bye.